Hello, my name is Jasmine, I'm an illustrator and for today's video it's going to be a bit longer than usual because I will be showing the entire process of how I created this short comic. Now the context of why this was created was because this was actually an episode in the artology Dreams Anthology that kind of rhymes. So basically a collective of artists contributed a short comic about some dream that they had and it was published on webtoons on a weekly basis. This was organized by Ariane. Now because this was a project that I filmed for several months, I realized I never filmed an intro. So I'm filming this after already done the comic. So let's go back into the past where I'm in the early stages of planning this. This short comic is gonna launch in webtoons. I know that I need to follow their vertical scrolling format. I've never really done the vertical scrolling. I tried doing it with my sci-fi webcomic Space Warriors, uh, but that was pretty easy because the pages were already a single panel to scroll down. I didn't have to think through, but if I want to later print this comic into a zine, I do need to figure out how I'll be able to switch formats easily. Instead of spending hours and hours figuring that out, I'm going to contact Ariane. So my question is, when it comes to webtoons, you also later want to print it as a zine so it would open like a magazine. Do you draw the panels separately and then put them together into a page document for the zine printing? I'm still going to see if Ariane has any wisdom on this. Looks like I got my response from Ariane. If you're gonna keep everything in the inside of boxes, inside of panels, I don't see like any issue with formatting it for other things. Surprisingly, not that much of an issue. Hello, it is 10 a.m. and we are going to continue to thumbnail this Dreams comic. I'm a little slow and puffy because I have not been able to get a good night's sleep for weeks because I've been getting really bad neck pain. Two reasons for the neck pain, really quickly. I My posture while making art is not good. That is attributed to drawing on my iPad and my display tablet. I just bought a non-display Wacom tablet with like $90. My art workflow will become more ergonomic with that. The second reason is I don't have a good pillow. I have cycled through at least three pillows now. Three fancy pillows. And it's still, I think the, this latest pillow, which is the Tempur-Pedic neck pillow, this one, it is, uh, it is actually making it worse. I wake up with shooting pain and a headache. I'm still working on it. I will figure it out, but in the meantime, I am quite slow and just puffy right now. As for the Dreams comic, I am so excited to finally getting stuff down on paper. I have sort of outlined it. I'm going to try really hard to make this a very short comic, and it'll be a good challenge for me to condense story and tell a good story as with as little panels as possible. I think that's kind of a fun challenge. So that's the mindset that I have. Now, I've already started to thumbnail some pages. I'm on page two now. This is the work that I started uh, last night. The story, aka the dream, starts in my high school gym. So obviously the first panel has to be an establishing shot. And I, I always struggle with the first page of any comic. I never know how to start the story. Like, I don't. Versus writing it, I'm great with first lines, or at least like I have fun with first lines. I'm comfortable playing around with that. But with comics, like that first page or that first panel, I don't know how to start it. If it's interesting, I'm just, yeah, it's not fun. But I was able to figure out something. I don't know if I'm gonna stick with that first panel. Right now, LA is going through a bit of a heat wave, so it is really, really hot. I finished my coffee, so I'm just gonna get like a sparkling water, a cold sparkling water, and jump into page two thumbnails. Along with working on the thumbnails, I would like to write a full script. There's not a lot of dialogue, it's mostly just the main character talking to themselves or their thoughts, so I should probably just 
write all of those things down too. So I'm gonna do that at the same time as thumbnailing while listening to music. Uh, honestly, this, this project just feels pretty chill for me. So I should really just have fun and not be focusing on process. It's gonna be a little bit chaotic, that's okay. I've turned this into a standing desk, stretch out a little bit. Ten minutes have passed and I wrote a little bit on the script. As I was drawing the first panel for page two, I realized I should really figure out what this gym looks like. And because in that dream was my high school gym, so I figured I would check out what that gym actually looked like. On a Google search, I only found like two pictures, so I couldn't quite get what the windows and where the doors were. Um, but I did find some videos on YouTube of my old high school gym, so that is just bringing in so many memories. I love that there's videos. I straight up have an excellent reference. I feel, I feel pretty good about not having to do any guesswork on what the gym looked like. So we're gonna do a 25 minute timer now and see how much we can get done with that. All right, so the thumbnailing is done. Ahem, we have a total of nine pages and 51 panels. I really am going to have to draw this with the utmost speed. Looking at the calendar, we are 42 days away from the launch day. Planning out the production schedule is not the first time I've done this. I actually made a video about creating a sustainable calendar for launching a comic. I'm pretty much gonna do the exact same thing. Instead of the launch being scheduled, it's gonna be more making the pages. Good morning. It's the next day and I just submitted my freelance job so we can return. Today we're going to start drawing this comic. I bought these deleter comic pages off of Amazon months ago. I bought both sizes to get a feel of just how big do I feel comfortable drawing. Holding them in my hands is like the dream come true because I fantasized about drawing in this paper back in middle school when I wanted to be a mangaka. This to me is just really funny to be holding now. It only took me like almost two decades to finally get my hand on something from Deleter, but apart from that, I think I'm going to go for the bigger size and I'm gonna do the smaller size for Space Warriors because eventually I do want to start drawing part two. This project is only nine pages. I think we can give it a go with the big boy paper. Always clean your desk before you draw. So I did a little test before I continued to draw more panels with this blue pencil. I scanned it and then I did the usual post-processing to remove the blue lines. Technically, you're not supposed to see anything inside the panels. The software is not fully able to remove it because it's too close to black. I should have known that because the blue that's already as a guideline on the paper is more of a turquoise color than the blue of my pencil. Wish you could see it better. There you go. So basically, this blue color of pencil is wrong. 
it is not for under sketching. It's too dark. So I'm not gonna use it anymore. For now, I am going to erase this blue stuff as much as I can and go back to my usual ways. exactly two o'clock and I finished the first panel. I'm trying to keep the lines pretty loose and really not focusing on background details. I really don't have time to take on another project but one of my goals this year was to finish something. Given that Girl Night, Space Warriors, and my fantasy romance story, all three of them are in no way going to be done this year. This short comic is much welcomed so I just need to bite the bullet and try to make this as fast as possible. Now that I kind of got the hang of what exactly I'm doing here and we figured out not to use blue lead pencil, we'll see if I can finish this whole page today. to this vlog in a long time. That is not to say that I haven't done anything in this project though. I have finished drawing all eight pages, and yes, eight pages, not nine. I removed one of the pages once I was actually drawing them, and I, I was surprised I was able to compress even more the story, but regardless, it's now eight pages and 50 panels. All of that I finished drawing last week, as well as the cover. So between the 13th, I'm looking at the calendar here, this is due the 23rd, so I have exactly 10 days to color all of this and then compile it into the webtoons format. I would be lying if I said I am not nervous about this little bit of a time crunch. I did not vlog any portion of having drawn the rest of the pages because I created TikToks and Reels during that whole process. You are welcome to check out my Instagram and my TikTok accounts for compilations of how I drew some of these pages. I have also been posting more information on my Patreon. In general, if you'd like to see more details about what I'm working on, I'll continue to share tidbits on there, so definitely check out my Patreon if you are interested. Now that I've done a recap of what I've been doing and where we are at, we now need to color all eight pages and the cover of this project before the 23rd. So. I have been trying to figure out what the style of the coloring is going to be. Much like the paneling limitations, in the sense that this has to be a short comic, the coloring aspect also has to be something simple. I have always been interested in screen printing. I've never fully explored that. There's the physical limitations of owning a screen printer and all that, and I never had a chance to take a class on it, but for years I've been interested in what a screen print looks like. Early, early on, like college, one of my favorite artists was Toulouse Lautrec, who is known to have done like Moulin Rouge posters, or any of the artists at the turn of the century. I got this book in a bookstore in Echo Park. I'm gonna leave the name of that bookstore right here because they are awesome. What I'm thinking is going through this art book and seeing if there are any posters that resemble the kind of style that I would like to try for this comic. Kitty, how am I supposed to look at the book?
So primarily what I'm looking at is how they handle shading and coloring. It's great to see these artists kind of do a uh, graphic design-y approach to color because it is heavy on the line work. Clothing, little folds everywhere. The problem with coloring and line work is that they tend to compete for attention. So if you're going to have a drawing that has a lot of details, then you don't want a coloring that's too complicated or busy. One or the other has to give in. So for this project, I am giving up coloring details so that the line work stands out the most. And so that is what I'm exploring here. And I'm seeing that shading here is done not by color, but by, I don't know what the term is, but they basically add gray. If we were to strip away all those gradations, we honestly only have four colors. Technically, it's just blue, yellow, and red. Everything else is a variation of it when you add or subtract black. Funny how that she has to be right in front of me, but it still feels like a cold shoulder. <laughs> That's cats for you. All right, then we must assemble the desk into cat formation. I'm trying to dissect how many colors are usually used and we've already established that shading is just through a gray texture so that is looking promising for the comic because the desk is in cat mode, we're gonna use the chair. And let's move on to the covers. Okay, so I still don't know exactly what I'm doing. The earth and the moon definitely don't follow the poster designs. I do think the floor came out exactly how I had imagined it. So this is the mass of colors that I chose and I put the dark brown texturing over it to see what the colors would look like after we add the shade on top. I hadn't decided what color the dress is. In real life, that dress was yellow, um, but the inside of the alien ship is already yellow, so I do feel like there's just too much yellow going on in the piece, so I might leave it white with uh, a bluish shading. So I don't know, I'm just pausing to explain what the heck I'm going through now that I finished the background because I definitely knew what the background needed to look like. Now we are in uncharted territory. So we'll see what I do with the dress. delightfully sleepy. I actually slept really well and by sleeping well I mean no neck pain so this whole like 
changing my my work setup is really helping alleviate my chronic neck pain figuring out all these setups so that my neck stays level it's really helping and another news our our senior dog is not doing very well and that partly explains why i haven't really felt like vlogging or putting makeup on it's just a total bummer and i'm done crying but yeah that's that's why i look like shit having finished the cover i did get a sense of what I would like to be doing in terms of style that decision has to be replicated for eight pages so September 20th uh, this comic is going to be due in three days but I pretty much need to be done with it in two days I don't remember when the last time I vlogged for this uh, it was definitely last week but we we lost Huck we had to say goodbye to him so it's been it's been really hard it's been really really hard you guys uh, I I could not vlog. I I can barely vlog right now. Yeah. Um. If you need to know anything, Huck was really old. He was 16, and it, it got to the point last week that he couldn't walk anymore, and he wasn't drinking water or eating. Like he was not. He was not okay. He was definitely suffering, so we were there until the very end. Um, it's been rough. But anyways, that is not why you're watching this video, so let's get back to the program. The thing with coloring this comic, though, is that I cannot... Okay, now I remember. So the last time I was filming, I was talking about taking inspiration from the Art Nouveau illustration stuff. What I did was not good. I was really not happy with the colors. They were like way too saturated and it just looked awful. I don't know. It, it, it wasn't working. I made the decision to, to scrap all that progress and really get back to the drawing board as to how really do I envision this like what what am I trying to say visually with this comic and the thing is I don't really have a visual colored idea of it I, I focused so much on the storytelling and drawing it that I don't think I've devoted too too much time in imagining it in its full like colored version so I'm pretty much just like exploring at this point and playing around with colors and gradients as well as with textures so from the last time that i vlogged up to this point i have redone 
some of these pages. Four of those pages are fully done and I'm working on the fifth one. So that means I have four other pages left. That is definitely getting into crunch time. Trying to figure out the style just ate up so much time. But it is what it is. And uh, that's where we will continue today. I have Kitty here. I have to finish page five, start page six, but not before coffee. next day we have a day and a half left to finish this and I'm on the second to last page I've been at this since 7 a.m. and it's already 2 o'clock p.m. I would ideally like to finish both pages today so that tomorrow I can focus on reformatting the whole comic into a webtoons thing adding all the text and any promotional images for it if I have to stay up late to color this I will I did stay up late last night so i will continue this my emotions go like this like if it's a good panel or a good page i feel great i feel like this is this is a really good experience for me before diving back into girl night and if i get a bad panel i feel like absolute crap and i question why the hell i'm an artist i figured i would check in so let's continue panels left in the entire comic to color. Being that it's almost 8 o'clock, I don't think that's too bad. I think I'll be able to finish this tonight. Jonathan is coming home from work late tonight without any interruptions or anything. I'm actually accurately predicting a timeline. I will say, coloring comics is really hard. Not only do you have to deal with the actual coloring part, but the method of coloring has to remain consistent throughout all the pages and I think that's where I struggle the most <laughs> getting a workflow down and sticking to it coloring makes me anxious it seems like a lot more discipline and knowledge of color and digital painting than what I am equipped to doing this has made me realize a little bit more that I am missing certain gaps of knowledge in terms of coloring digital coloring because I'm sure that there are workflows including like lasso tool and alpha modes that would make the process a lot smoother. I'm definitely curious to know what professional colorists workflow look like because I bet they have tons of tricks. Hello! It is the next day obviously. It's 12 30 and I am officially done with 
all of the artwork involved in this. And this morning I added all the text and the final alien ship stuff because I hadn't really figured that part out and I knew if I left it all the way as the last thing to do, I would get a good idea. And that's exactly what happened. I'm pretty happy with how it ended up looking. It was the thing that I was dreading the most and it ended up being the funnest part. So all that is left is to format the comic into a webtoons vertical scrolling thing. Hi. Hello. If you've managed to watch all the way to the end of this video, wow. Thank you for watching the whole process. If you'd like to read the comic, check out the link in the description. What's next for me is to focus on my medieval comic Girl Night. So that's where we're moving towards now. Um, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Make sure to hit the bell button so that you get notified when I come out with a new video. I try to aim for bi-weekly stuff. Um, I also have a Patreon where I post more in-depth things about my process, including sneak peeks. But that's, uh, that's pretty much it for today. Thanks again for watching. I'll see you in the next video. <laughs> Bye!